What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to get into my perspective on psychedelics. And this is a topic that I have been asked about quite frequently over the history of this channel. And I have said that I was going to make a video about it at different points and I'm going to delve into that today. Um, just a disclaimer with all of this, that this is a topic that is not easy to discuss. We're going to get into some stuff today that you may not agree with. And so I just wanted to let you know that, that this isn't really easy for me to talk about. Um, so I'll talk, I'll start talking first about how my history and experience was with psychedelics and that's going to lead into how I feel about it now and I'm going to get into my perspective with everything because my experience is the reason why I feel the way that I do about this topic now to this day. So okay, um, as you know if, if you have watched any of my videos where I get into my history um, I grew up in the hippie scene. I left home when I was 16 years old to follow the rest of the members of the Grateful Dead and Fish. And so psychedelics were like a huge part of my like coming of age, growing up experience. Um, in the hippie culture, as you probably could guess, um, there is a huge presence of psychedelics that are going on, both with people taking them, people um, selling them, and also it's just like interwoven in like the history of these bands and this music as a whole. So um, it was really a part of like my coming of age where I started to get into this music when I was around 15 years old. And so that's when the introduction of weed came about. And then shortly after, um, there was the introduction of like psychedelic mushrooms that came into my life. Uh, I come from a really rough family background. And so um, when I discovered like the whole like psychedelic um, mushroom thing, it became kind of like an escape for me to like, you know, use them and to escape what was going on in my life. So I went forward, I left home, and like I was saying, like, psychedelics are a huge part of the hippie scene. And um, it's almost like an initiation process, if you will, with psychedelics in this scene, where you um, how do I articulate it? It's kind of hard to explain. It's like a rite of passage almost where, um, I'm sure there are people who are not using psychedelics in this sort of environment, but, um, a lot of times, especially with the way that I was living, which was, I was traveling around following these tours and there was like, it there was this own the its own little like um like culture of people and like its own economy and like its own just like little society almost of people who were traveling around and this became um with you know taking a lot of psychedelics especially like it was like kind of like a rite of passage. It wasn't required. It wasn't like a, you know, like a gang, you know, sort of thing where like, oh, to be a part of this, you have to like take all these psychedelics. It just was like this unspoken sort of, you know, like an initiation rite almost. And so when I was young, um, I ended up, and this was, and, and I just want to clarify too, again, it wasn't like I was being forced to do this. This just actually happened by accident. One of these first experiences where I took a lot of psychedelics, um, it, it happened on accident. Um, I had some friends who were traveling to see where I was living at the time. I had like a little home base in the college town near where I grew up where I would stay there in between the tours that I was doing for the first couple years that I was on the road. 
And I had some friends who were traveling through and they had gotten pulled over by the police and they had a bunch of sugar cubes that they had dosed with acid and that they were, you know, selling at the concerts. And to avoid getting arrested for that, they took all the sugar cubes and put them into um, just like a fast food cup of soda. So in this cup of soda, there were probably over a hundred dissolved sugar cubes that were dosed. And so I had been drinking that night and they were passing around this cup of basically all of this, this acid. And because I was, you know, intoxicated and had been drinking, I drank a lot more than I should have. And I was very young. This was the first year that I left home. And I, um, yeah, so I was about 16 years old. And so I got extremely, extremely high to say the least. Like I was basically tripping on acid for about five days straight. And this was my first experience. I had done the mushrooms plenty before, but this was my first experience with acid. And so, um, again, it happened by accident, but it was kind of this like, you know, initiation sort of thing um, that I experienced. And so this is what started off everything. And I continued to travel following these bands. Um, I, you know, it was, it became a commodity for me where I would, you know, Ha like sell it at the concerts that I was at and whatnot. And so um, it was just like a part of everything. And as I got older, fast forward, um, I stopped, I stopped with the whole, you know, using them and I settled down and wasn't on the road anymore. So they just kind of like disappeared out of my life. And I remember there was a point where I said, I would never do them again. And so life went on. I ended up going through a lot of challenges, a lot of loss, um, a lot of just like different struggles in my life. And I had quit drinking shortly before this was all going on. And so I had hit these like these challenges. And also, as you know, if you see on my channel here that we're doing this um, like trauma series on our channel where I talk about like different aspects of healing from trauma, PTSD and CP CPTSD. So I had all of this trauma in my background as well. And so I hit this turning point. I'm in my late twenties when this is going on. I had stopped drinking. I was not taking like any sort of like, you know, medications I didn't believe in. I still don't believe in any of that kind of stuff. But I found myself at this crossroads in my life where like I had all of this unresolved trauma that I was dealing with. I was going through so much stuff in my life at that time and psychedelics crossed my path again. And this time it was in the form of something that was a lot more powerful. And um, at this point too, I wanna mention, um, and just to let you know as well, we're going to go into in another video, like the spiritual aspect of psychedelics and the spiritual risks and dangers of using psychedelics. Um, we're not going to talk about that as much in this video, but um, just to, you know, kind of explain a little bit of where I was at in that topic of things that um, I had basically like turned my back on my faith during this point of my life where psychedelics, you know, kind of came back and crossed my path again. And I had um, just just lost faith in, in, in what I knew as God, what I understood as God. And in that, that put me in a very vulnerable place because I am the type of person where I was literally created to love God and to worship God. And when I turned my back on that, it left me very vulnerable and very open and susceptible to different things. And that really became an issue when the psychedelics came back into my life again. Because um, what ended up happening was I started to use DMT a lot 
and a lot meaning like probably like two to three times a month and I was having you guys like these full-blown um, visions on DMT where I was if you know anything about this psychedelic it's extremely powerful it's basically um, like a short acting version of ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is a psychedelic that lasts for 12 to 14 hours, sometimes even more. And with DMT, um, you go under, like you lose consciousness for about 15 minutes sometimes. And it's this extremely powerful psychedelic trip that you are, you literally leave your body. Um, Sometimes when it's taken in smaller doses, it isn't as powerful. Um, but the amount that I was that I was using of it, and I was looking for these kind of experiences at this point. I was looking for answers. I had turned my back on my faith, and I believed that if there was a God and He allowed what was going on in my life to happen, that I wanted nothing to do with Him. So I was looking for answers. If, if I didn't believe in God anymore as I knew him, I was looking for answers as to what, you know, the, the deeper meanings of life were. I've always had that about me. I've always been a seeker. I've always been one that knew that there was more to life than this material realm. Um, so when I was in this space, and I was having these psychedelic visions on DMT where like, I should just make a video in itself about what I experienced because it was so extremely powerful. But basically in a nutshell to just kind of like sum up some of the things that I was experiencing. Like I went into this DMT experience like asking questions about like, who is God? What is God? What is the deal? And I experienced this vision where I went into the cells of my own body and I got to the center of the cells of, of my own body. And then the perspective shifted outward and I saw the, the earth basically and every single thing on the earth, whether it be every single living thing on the earth, whether it be a human, an animal, a plant, and as the perspective shifted outward, I saw each, each living thing as like basically a facet of the divine, of God. And when the, sh the perspective shifted all the way outward, and it wasn't an audible like voice that was saying this. It was like an internal sort of like, uh, like spoken dialogue that was being communicated that like you wanted the answer here is God God is everything God is every living thing we are all facets of the divine we are all connected and we are all creating the divine and so I woke up from this experience you guys and I was like ch like changed forever changed at that moment and I thought that I had the answers and it was so real. Like, that's the thing about it is that, like, I had plenty of experience with, you know, mushrooms and acid, but I had never had such a profound experience as this DMT trip that I had. And it literally changed the course of my life. And because, like I said, I'm one that is wired for, you know, I'm a seeker. I'm looking for answers. I'm looking for the meaning and the depths of meaning in this life. And it just completely changed me in that moment. And so um, this started about a 15 year um, point in my life where like that was the foundation of my beliefs. It was the foundation of like my spiritual beliefs. It was the foundation of how I saw the world. And so things went on and I'm continuing to use DMT, you know, on a monthly basis. And I am going into these experiences like, you know, by this point, I am all like all about like, you know, like using psychedelics for medicinal purposes and for spiritual purposes. And I'm like, reading all of this stuff about like, you know, how to use psychedelics 
in these like deeper, you know, deeper ways where like I'm going in and I'm setting intentions when I'm taking these substances and I'm like, you know, trying to do inner work, you know, with my trauma and my childhood. And so like, this is like becoming a huge part of my life. And so that's like explaining like, you know, and there, I, I just, I have so many stories about the things that I experienced in these like trips and like these visions that I had and that I'm going to save that for another place and another time. But like, basically like my whole life is now being influenced by these experiences. And so that's what I went through. Okay. Let's get into like how things play out. So, okay, things, things move forward and I am getting into like six, seven, eight, ten years of like the, having these beliefs. I'm going into these psychedelic experiences going like, you know, show me my purpose. Show me my, you know, show me, you know, what I'm supposed to do with, with my life. And I'm being told in these experiences that like, you know, follow, follow your work with plants because at this point I'm working in the cannabis industry and I started studying herbalism. And so like, I'm being told in, in these visions, like follow your work with plants, make your music because I've always made music as you probably know, make your art was what was communicated to me in these visions by beings, which again, this is gonna be a whole other video. I'm really thinking about making a video just in itself about this one experience and vision that I had where it was literally like, it looked like an angel of light with a blue sash over its chest that literally gave me a review of my whole life and my whole past and my whole future. And it was the most real experience, you guys. And as you know, if you come from a faith base, like, you know, the devil himself can come disguised as an angel of light. And it was nothing short of that. But we'll get into that in another in another video. So basically, like my life is unfolding. And like, I'm studying herbalism. I'm making psychedelic music. I'm making psychedelic art. I'm advocating for psychedelics any chance that I got. Because I thought at this point, as I'm going through this, that I am becoming enlightened. I thought at this point that I was given some sort of like a secret knowledge that like other people don't have about who God is and like what the whole point of like life is. And I am becoming more and more prideful in this like knowing that I have this deeper understanding that like everybody doesn't have. And so as time plays out and I'm following this whole like work in the cannabis industry, I am, uh, I had studied herbalism at this point. Um, I have a small business where I'm making herbal products infused with cannabis. Like my whole life is based on like different things that I, you know, different beliefs that I had from these psychedelics, everything, the way that I decorated my home, um, different things just about my personality, like have, were like so heavily influenced by these beliefs. Um, I got into at that time d through like just different healing attempts that I was in when I was in the new age, which basically this is what all of this was, was just new age beliefs where I was doing like, basically like they were called angel card readings, but like um, I was working with another person, another who was a dear friend of mine at that time. And he and I were doing these like card readings and basically channeling like um, communication with who we thought were angels at the time. And what was started going on basically was that like the stuff that was going on in these psychedelic visions and experiences started to basically permeate my waking life. And I'm having stuff going on where like it is so undeniable that like this stuff was real what I was experiencing because it was literally happening in my waking life where, excuse me, I'm having these communications with these beings and I'm not making this up you guys like I am I am dead serious that like this stuff was happening 
where I would make connections with, you know, these like what I thought were angels. And then I'd have this friend call me up literally at that time and be like, you know, I just want to let you know that Archangel Michael is with you right now. And I'm just having all of this stuff going on. And so things are snowballing and progressing in my life and in these beliefs. And I hit a point where like it started to get really dark really quick because there was this honeymoon phase for quite a while. You guys were like everything is just like, you know, beautiful and like colorful and I'm having all of these like, you know, spiritual revelations and I'm just going further and learning about this stuff and like, you know, like getting into different like cultures around the world and the psychedelics that they used and like trying to apply it to my life as far as like these other cultures and how they used like different psychedelics and, you know, their traditional like, you know, cultural beliefs and like, it's just snowballing and snowballing. And so things started getting really dark really quick and um, how this is going to interweave with Kratom because this is a channel that focuses on addiction and we focus a lot on Kratom addiction is that this is when Kratom crossed my path when I had been study, studying herbalism and this was right before things started getting really dark and Kratom crossed my path and it was in line with my beliefs that at this point like I hadn't drank alcohol in eight years I only believed in putting unprocessed plants in my body. And so Kratom crossed my path and it seemed like a great idea. I struggle with a chronic pain condition. Um, I have all of this stuff going on with this unresolved trauma in my life. And Kratom crosses my path and I'm just like, rock and roll, let's do it. And I tried it. And as you know, as you can check out all of the other videos on my, vi on my channel about like what happened with Kratom, where like that was really the descent into darkness for me and the descent into the one of the lowest points of my life that I've been in, which is the Kratom addiction. So things are, you know, progressively getting darker and darker and I am feeling literally these beliefs and everything that I had based my life on for almost 15 years at this point, over a decade, just completely swallowing up and everything had turned on me. And I felt like the darkness was palpable, you guys. Like I felt, I felt the depths of the darkness that I was in. And at this point, I'm still holding on to these, you know, beliefs that I had um, adopted from these psychedelic visions. And I'm thinking that they can get me out of this place that I was in. And they couldn't. And so at the end of it all, I find myself not wanting to live anymore. I find myself skin and bones in a Kratom addiction, not being able to leave the house. I find my trauma literally like swallowing me whole. And it was that point where I knew that there was no psychedelic. I knew that there was no plant. I knew that there was no new age belief, no angel that I thought was an angel, no angel card reading, no astrology reading. There was nothing in that like set of beliefs that I had been in for 15 years that was going to save me out of this and I also knew if I kept going any further that I was going to die straight up I may not have had a physical death but my soul had literally died inside of my body in these beliefs and then where the depths that I had ended up in had brought me to and so in another video you can check that out on my channel it's in some of the the beginning ones where i talk about my kratom experience and i'm not going to go into it completely here but this is when i knew that i needed something bigger than myself and bigger than those beliefs and bigger than the psychedelics to get me out of it so check out the other videos to hear about that but that basically sums up my experience with that and so moving forward what i then did with um, getting free from my Kratom addiction, going through trauma therapy, um, getting healthy and like healing my body, healing my mind, healing my soul. I was able to move forward from all of this. And now as I get into um, talking about how I feel about psychedelics, you know my story with them. And I haven't gone into like 
this amount of detail before. And I've had many people on this channel in the comments ask me about how I feel about psychedelics. And I'll kind of sum it up, but I've never really told my story about that. So that was the deal and that's my experience. I come from an extensive history of this stuff, you guys, of the psychedelics, of using them, you know, in a deeper, you know, meaning way. And, you know, yes, I experienced like feeling better for a little bit of time after I would take them. Usually like it would give this like afterglow effect for about three months or so. And then I would find myself in the same place all over again, where, you know, my trauma is nipping at my heels. What I have going on in my life is affecting me. And so that's when I would think, oh, I just you know, need to have another healing session or whatever. And so I have extensive history, you guys. And I went to such depths with these substances where like I come out on the other side and I'm not just like, oh, you know, I did, I did this, you know, for, for, you know, one time or whatever. Like the amount of times and the amounts of psychedelics that I've used, I'm lucky that I'm okay today, to be honest with you. Um, because what happened, like, just to, to explain one more before we go into how I feel about them today, what ended up happening is that I became so detached from reality because of these experiences. And like I said, they were permeating my waking life and I'm working in the cannabis industry and I'm making psychedelic music and I'm making psychedelic art. And like, I, it was like, I was, I had no touch with reality. And so I'm so thankful that I sit before you today, like actually grounded and in touch with reality and sober, thankfully. But so how do I feel about them now? This is how I feel, you guys. I feel that these are potentially very dangerous drugs. These are not you know, healing mechanisms, you know, these aren't, this isn't plant, you know, plant medicine. These are drugs, okay? You are getting high off of these substances. And there is a, an incredible amount of risk and danger in psychedelics that as they become more popular now, like in pop culture, you know, I'll go through my YouTube feed and there's just all this stuff promoting them. Like I said, I was a staunch advocate for them for a really long time. And they, it's just like you could, Joe Rogan, sorry, Joe Rogan is, you know, talking about them. You know, you're seeing them all over the place, like, you know, ketamine therapy, um, you know, psilocybin uh, studies going on at Johns Hopkins, like they're, they're everywhere now. And they are so dangerous, you guys, because like I came back from them and sure a lot of people may come back from these experiences and be okay afterwards. But I'll tell you right now in the Grateful Dead scene, I have seen people who have taken so many psychedelics that they never came back. And that is a possibility. And if there is any underlying mental health stuff, if you have any history of depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, um, anything like that, you can put yourself in a very huge in very huge danger to have lasting mental health stuff that can be the result of using these psychedelics like i told you i was not in touch with reality for 15 years that's another thing that can happen i've seen that happen too i see it happening all over youtube where people are just like you know like in this like trip, I guess you can say, you know, where they're not on, you know, on the psychedelics right now, but like there is this, just this disconnection from reality that happens. Because like when you have these visions and these experiences, like a lot of times, like it's very influential in like how you think and how you see the world. So like that's something that, you know, th that's a risk of these things as well. Um, another risk that is associated with these things is that like, you know, it's kind of like a trail of breadcrumbs with these where like you have one experience and like it can be, you know, a positive experience. You feel good afterwards. You feel like there's like some sort of healing that's come along and you keep chasing these experiences 
And so it creates this like, you know, like this trail of breadcrumbs where you're just like, you know, basically chasing the next experience and you're never, and that's like the biggest thing that I want to like really drive home in this video is that you are not getting to the root issues of your, of your problems and of your, um, you know, your trauma or your grief or, you know, whatever it is that you're going through or, you know, just going through life. We all have to grow up and mature and you're never truly getting to the root issue of what it is that you need to be doing to heal or to grow or to learn with these drugs. Because what's going to happen is that you're, you're, again, you're becoming further away from like reality and from the actual real work of addressing either the trauma, um, either the loss, either the, you know, the learning and the growing that you need to do in your life. And you're getting high on these substances. And so the real work is not going to be done. And like, that's the biggest part about it. Like for me, when I finally like laid those beliefs to rest and laid, laid all of the substances because I was a big weed smoker for 15 years, when I finally laid all of that to rest and I started putting the real work of like looking at my life, my trauma, my losses, my pain and looking at it dead sober, and that's the work, you know, like getting high on mushrooms or ayahuasca or DMT or acid or whatever, that's not putting in work. That's escaping what you have going on. And because of how these substances change your perspective, you may think that and you may be convinced that you're actually, you know, putting in this work and you're healing, but you're not. You're just getting high. And so um, that's something that's like the most important about this. And another risk about these things is like you can have a bad trip. I'm sure you've heard about this before. Things can get really dark. And this has happened to me before. I have went through this where I experienced a very, very dark DMT trip. And it was, it was horrible. And so you can have this experience where it's not all like, you know, rainbows and sunshine and you know everything is great and you're happy you can experience like what i experienced the depths of hell straight up when i had a bad dmt uh trip one time and so like that's a that's a risk with these as well and so um these are just, you know, some things that I want to explain about like where I I have gotten to with how I feel about psychedelics and like what I experienced. One thing that I want to mention again and we'll get into this in another video at some point is that spiritually these are very dangerous, you guys. Like if you watch this channel, you know that this is a faith-based channel and its roots and so if you're watching this and you are a person of faith, I want to give you a pretty like, you know, big warning right now that like spiritually these things are very dangerous. Like we are not intended to uh, go into certain aspects of the spiritual realms. It's set up that way for our protection. And you know what? Uh, Aldous Huxley's book, the doors of perception. It's a really interesting way to think about this, that like, you know, the doors of perception are about psychedelics. And so if you look at these substances, like they are doors, that's something that is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very dangerous thing that when you use these substances, when you use these drugs, you are opening doors into places that you should not be. And that was what happened to me where I had opened up these doors. And, you know, like I had mentioned before, I experienced like communication with what I thought were angels and like this uh, kind of like interweaving of what I had experienced in, you know, these trips that I was on and like these psychedelic experiences that I had had that that because the doors were open those things were then it was it was fair game to come into my life and so i started experiencing that in my everyday life in my waking life 
And I understand that this is an extreme version of this, that this may not happen to everybody. And I'm not saying that it's going to, but this was what happened to me. And the point of what I'm saying right now is that spiritually, these things are extremely dangerous. So here it is. If you've asked before about what my perspective is on psychedelics, here it is. And um, as you can see, like I've had a lot of experience with it and I am at the place where I am and I believe what I am because of a lot of experience, a lot of years. And um, to sum it all up, I do believe that the healing truly comes from being sober and from putting in the work to heal in a clear mind and in a grounded way and that these substances do not heal. They just distract us from the real work and the real healing that we all very much so deserve. So that that's my story, that's my view on things and um, you're welcome to oppose that view. You're welcome to share your views in the comments section if you like. Um, but I appreciate you for listening. I know that this is a long video, but it's, it's a long story. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.